got Shooter Shells in the building, man. You know I'm ripping the east side, man. You know I'm coming, man. Black Mob, bro. That's what's up. Shooter Shells, man. You are going fucking crazy all over the yeah, internet. Welcome. You dropped a video with lock of films. That motherfucker had a half a fucking million. Was that your ver first video? Hell no. Nah. I got I got other videos, but like when people put my name, sometimes they put like the shooter shells together. Or they have spaces like shooter and shell. So if you look up shooter shells together, like all my old videos gonna pop up. I got videos from like 2013, you feel me? 2015. You know, I was booked or whatever, 2014, all that shit, but yeah, I got it. That's hell no. Nah. Well, he is just 19 and charged with a quadruple homicide. This is Maurice Harris. Police say the teen, who is no stranger to law enforcement, gunned down four people near 75th and Coles last week. The reason? Police say it appears to be retaliation for his father's murder a day earlier. Man, that little bit drop. Let's go my mail, I did a PPP that didn't go through in that address. 14, 15, whatever. Why the fuck you ain't dead yet? I was locked up. I was on home. Shout out to the phone. Man, no, don't get on him. Look, then your soft ass come out of jail for you five feet, folks. What you was doing? Anytime, look. What you was doing? Anytime I did a buck with y'all at school. The time I did punch on you is when we was at Piggy's. Anytime I did a buck with y'all at school, y'all felt that pain. Oh, shit, y'all. Why are you so on him back? See, that's why I don't like adding you goofy ass niggas because you get on him back. Look, anytime I did a buck with y'all at school, y'all felt that pain. Get straight to it, man. The Death of 150 track. Where that, yeah, where that come from, man. You know, like we've been in tour with them guys for a minute. You know, Lil Herb or whatever them, like all them Lil 150 guys. You feel me? Ain't specifically Lil Herb, it's just all of them. You feel me? I ain't singling out just him. You feel me? All of them. We're in tour with the whole, all of them. You feel me? Following the tragic death of KTS Vaughn in the summer of 2015, the No Limit Gang found themselves relentlessly targeted by rival ops. Shooter Shells, a prominent member, faced legal troubles after being released from jail. Okay, you do the shit with Locker, boom, and went viral, like super viral, everybody talking about it. What was the problem? Like, is it some over E shit, bit, beef or whatever? Like, what, what, what went on? Yeah, you know, we in tour with them. You feel me? The little herd guys or whatever, the little no, the no limits. You feel me? We in tour with them, so there's a whole bunch of east side shit going on. You feel me? I don't know too many people know what's going on. You feel me? I'm talking about cloud chasing, like I'm just trying to come out, diss the man, and you feel me? Get some cloud hell night and shit like that. This shit been going on. Okay, okay, okay. So, would you, like, is it safe to say the east side is, is like its own fucking Chirac? It's like it's a whole different war. It's a whole different shit that the city don't know about. To a certain degree, you can say that, but uh, you got niggas fucking with niggas from everywhere, you feel me? So, niggas get involved from other places because, you know, they probably got relatives or something that's from over here. You feel relatives that's from over there, and they be getting involved, you feel me? So, the thing is, everybody goes consider the east side state to the lake. Right. That's, that's a lot of the, like, motherfuckers that's like 20, 30. A lot of young motherfuckers, they be talking about they from out south, you feel me? They be from out cottage, or they be from out king drive, niggas be still talking about they, they from out south. Out south, that's past state. The shooter shells. Filled by the desire to avenge his fallen brother Scoobs, allegedly sought revenge against Yogi, the man responsible for Scoobs' death. T -t Tell me this, with the shit that's going on, that shit happened back when you said when y'all was in fifth and sixth grade, motherfuckers fight. Can the shit change now? Nah. It been, it been a lot of bloodshed though. Even though blood, blood, bodies lost. It be, even though motherfuckers had money, you feel me? A motherfucker do that rap beat shit. Who used to say that if a certain nigga from down now, you feel me? It probably. You know, so like motherfuckers that got the money, they probably don't, don't be on that shit trying right. to, you know, 
risk it all and got them and get locked up all that but it's still gonna be niggas that ain't in, in play that got some bread that can really stop shit they gonna be still keeping the bullshit up you feel me the shit gonna keep happening man motherfuckers die behind that shit you gonna hear all his homies die you feel me i lost my brother to that shit so it ain't like i could just turn my back and be like you feel me fuck that shit but if i was to get on that shit it'd be some more like for the next generation type shit you okay awesome. like man you feel me motherfucker gotta learn how to forgive and let shit go because if we just keep this shit up the shit it's just, it's just gonna be a, you feel me an everlasting cycle the shit gonna keep going on and on and on the beef between Shooter Shells and G Herbal escalated both on the streets and in the music. G Herbal had been dissing Shooter Shells as early as 2012, sparking a lyrical exchange that continued over the years. We'll take a closer look at the disses and responses that filled this intense rivalry. Like, when he first started rapping or whatever, he feel me when motherfuckers were just local. He had mentioned my name in the track. This one, I don't even really rapping like that. I don't, you know, everybody always play around with the music, but you feel me? I wasn't taking that shit too serious. You feel me? Motherfucker put me up on game. This is around the time I, I, I ended up getting shot, like 2011. It was like around that time, like 2011, 2012. He put that, um, it was to that, um, not that y'all don't really, but that I'm a boss shit. You feel me? He, um, he, he, he said some shit about me or whatever. Now, your kind of your upbringing, um, you from East East Chicago, East Side. Yeah, the East Side. Yeah. Known as the what the pocket is that what they call it? Yeah. Well, kind of break down that definition of that man, because you the first person I ever interviewed knowingly from the East Side. Um, uh, the East Side man, that's it's one of the most to me the one of the most stylish to me. Like that's where the style come from. Okay. Like the East Side, but it's treacherous over there though. It's also breaking one woman. One man killed in a shootout in the East Side community tonight. Police say the 26-year-old victim and three other men drove up to a home near 79th and our 97th, excuse me, and Avenue L and started shooting at people on a porch. Most people fired back, hitting the driver who then crashed into a parked car. Police are currently questioning at least one suspect. On April 6, 2017, shooter shells made a significant splash with his diss track titled Death of 150. The music video featuring an arsenal with guns escalated tensions between No Limit and Black Mob. How fucked up is it to y'all and y'all being on the east side? Is it the worst part of Chicago? Be it's real. Fucked up. It's yeah, fucked yeah. up, real shit. Like, it's fucked up. Like, motherfuckers see this interview, certain motherfuckers like, damn, what? Oh, okay. Man, we on his ass too. Whoa, you know? whoa. Yeah. There be like a lot of that shit going on. That's why, like, certain motherfuckers don't like certain people. You feel me? Even in my videos, I don't be like, if, unless it's like on some drill shit, I don't want no females in my videos, none of that shit, because it'd be, it be a few incidents will happen when motherfuckers be in the videos and they end up getting shot. When they really, really like with that shit, they will judge you from supporting me. You feel me? Some of the videos, motherfuckers gonna have fun, turn up. And then, next thing you know, motherfuckers get up, you know, get into some bullshit. Motherfuckers get on their ass, like, are you with that shit? Are you supporting them? Next time we in the video, we, we game back. You feel me? So we, we got our guns, whatever we go do. Just nine days after dropping Death of 150. Rumors suggest that Shooter Shells allegedly claimed another victim, making it his fifth murder. This time, the target was the father of Lil Wet, known as Big Wet. The consequences of this killing set off a shocking retaliation that claimed four lives. CBS 2 Suzanne Lemonyo reports. Police say Maurice Harris's father, Jerry Jacobs, was a documented gang member who was arrested 47 times in the past. Jacobs was shot to death a day before the quadruple homicide happened near 75th and Coles. I don't have the motive for, for why Jerry Jacobs was killed, but I mean, it's uh, a reasonable belief Jerry Jacobs is murdered. Then 24 hours later, his own son goes and kills four people. So obviously, those two incidents are related. 19-year-old Harris is now charged with four counts of first-degree murder. Three witnesses to this quadruple murder identified Maurice Harris as the shooter. Prosecutors say Harris is a documented gang member with an extensive juvenile record. As we've seen too many times before here in Chicago, he's no stranger to CPD. Harris has had 29 arrests. His crimes range from armed robbery to unlawful firearm possession. His first arrest? was at the age of 12. If someone would do a deep analysis into this, this ju him as a juvenile, it would be no shock that we're here talking to you today about this. Tips led police to an address in Blue Island where Harris was taken into custody. He's being held without bond. Live in the newsroom, Suzanne Lemonyo, CBS2 News. Erica, Rob. Suzanne, thank you. Hey,
Motherfucker gotta walk through the land real fast, you know. Still be on maximum security, you know, ain't shit change. Yeah, you know, through the land, have to, you know, this motherfucker drive, but shit, you know, shoot the shells back, you know, shit from the hit. In the aftermath of Shooter Shell's death, Lil Wet, a member of No Limit, was accused of a shocking crime, allegedly killing four people in one night. The details surrounding this incident are disturbing, and the repercussions will echo through the Chicago drill scene. Is it dying down a little bit to y'all? The war over East? Nah. Okay. Cause they still, <laughs> motherfuckers still slap. Especially with this music shit. Yeah. Especially with the music shit. If, if like, like I said, if, if we was just broke and shit, and motherfuckers weren't doing no music, the shit would probably die yeah. down. Unless we slide on them. But if they getting their money, a motherfucker ain't gonna have time for that. But when some, when some motherfuckers doing the music, and like the song just did them numbers and shit, and it's getting a lot of they recognition, motherfuckers don't like that. So motherfuckers wanna retaliate. You feel me? Off the song, just off the song. Shoot a motherfucking shells, Mr. Death 150. Yeah, y'all know I be catching y'all stupid ass. You know? And I got that shit. But you know, everybody telling me to leave the, um, that other shit alone. There's folks on this music. And they right. So I'm gonna do that, you know? Stay out the way. Cause, you know, they wanna see a nigga down. I ain't finna be booked forever. You know? Yeah. That's what they wanna see. Shout out them fucking them. Shooter Shell's life came to a gruesome end on July 10th, 2017. As he entered his car, a white Nissan Altima pulled up and three assailants opened fire, fatally wounding him. The brutality didn't stop there. Shooter Shells was shot multiple times in the face, creating one of the most grisly scenes in Chicago drill history. Now, right now, we're on 81st at the liner, and this is the actual death site of a uh, shot of shit. And if I'm not mistaken, it's these red steps right here. Hold on. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Block a little bit to show you guys. Hmm. Yeah, but guys, if you really think about the life of Shadow Shells, it was pretty traumatic. I mean, he didn't have any parents. He was a foster child. Uh, I think two of his brothers died. Uh, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good life. And he was actually really talented at rapping. We're gonna walk past it again so we can get a better shot. One second. If I'm not mistaken, it's these stairs right here. It should be this right here. Rest in peace, shot of shells. He was gunned down in the streets. Very, very unfortunate situation. And I'm out. The FBI was called in to investigate Shooter Shell's murder, and a prime suspect was reportedly Mad Max from No Limit. Despite hey, being caught with a gun shortly after the incident, Mad Max was released due to a lack of subsequential evidence. The investigation took a dark turn, revealing the complex and violent dynamics within Chicago. Okay guys, I wanna speak on this situation with reports coming out that Mad Max allegedly snitched on Shooter Shells for killing his homeboy Simo. I think it was Simo. Um, now I think Mad Max and Simo and them had did something to one of Black Mob, remember? I think Jordan or somebody did want something to one of their members over there. Uh, and Shooter Shells got back on the head, you know what I'm saying? He was get, really getting back. Shooter Shells was that dude, you know what I'm saying? Y'all really know that if he was alive. Dude really, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that nigga. But um, Mad Max allegedly snitched on him for doing that. Mad Max was, 
said to snitch on a lot of people, but he don't get me wrong, man, Mad was a killer. He was a street nigga, but all oh, they go out the window when you out there snitching. And he said that he snitched on Shooter Shell for doing that, but Shooter Shell never got locked up. Or he might have got arrested, I don't know. But Mad Max end up killing him. Allegedly, that Mad Max number took place of getting him up out of here for doing that. G Herbo, Shooter Shell's longtime rival, responded to his death with subtle references in his music. In his song, Four Minutes of Hell, Part 5, Herbo mocked Shells for his violent demise. The aftermath of Shooter Shell's death will continue to play out in the lyrics of other artists, adding another layer to the ongoing drill war. Oh, my whole book bag smell like doink. Oh, damn. But y'all stop commenting shit on my page. Get the fuck off my page if y'all finna comment all this lame ass shit. I already know everything that's going on. Leave me the fuck alone. I don't know nothing about nothing. Y'all ask the police on Vito. Get the fuck off my page with that gay ass shit. I don't know nothing about nothing about nothing about nothing. Get the fuck off my page before I don't get on live and block all y'all up. First of all. Lil Wet, who allegedly went on a killing spree, further intensified the violence. The details of this night would send shockwaves through the community, raising questions about the cycle of revenge and retaliation that plagued Chicago streets. conclude this chapter of today's video the stories of shooter shells and little wet serve as stark reminders of the harsh realities these individuals faced the consequences of their actions continue to reverberate through the city make sure to like this video share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more in-depth explorations in the chicago drill scene stay tuned to drillers and trappers 247 where we bring the unfiltered truth behind the music. Until next time, gang.